In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Wait patiently for the Lord. He will come and will not delay. You are listening to Advent Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Siamme, a selection of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. We will Sunday the 17th of December 2023 third Sunday of Advent and today we are using the candle of joy the candle we are lighting today is the pink candle which signifies joy why because today is gaudete sunday and this sunday is joyful sunday it is a joyful sunday because it is a sunday that tells us that our god is here with us he's near and since god is here with us why should we be sad This Sunday is celebrated as Joyful Sunday in the Catholic Church, the Anglican Communion, the Lutheran Churches, and other mainline Protestant churches that understand the meaning of this Sunday. So we have a distinct candle that is different from all the other four candles that we use. And wherever possible for our priests, we use also the pink candle color for our outer vestment that is the chasuble so that we let people understand that the message today is the message that takes people back home joyful that they are not alone participating in the proclamation of the word of god for today are the following daily bread members Lucy Mateta from Grafsend, Kent in United Kingdom, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Perpetual and Teacher Ona Chivanda, celebrating their wedding anniversary today from Rustenburg, South Africa, takes for us the responsorio Sam. Sister Bridget Mwingine celebrating her religious anniversary today from Konongo, Ghana. Text for us the second reading. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Andrew Kim Dung, who celebrates his birthday on the 21st of this month from Pakingshim Diocese in Nigeria. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61 from verses 1 to 2a, 10 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns itself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, And as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm 
is from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 48, 49 to 50, and 53 to 54. Response is taken from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. And the response is, My soul shall exalt in my God. My soul shall exalt in my God. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has regarded the low estate of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. My soul shall exalt in my God. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. My soul shall exalt in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. My soul shall exalt in my God. Second reading. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Brethren, rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophesying, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation is taken from Luke chapter 4, verses 18. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to be a witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness to the light. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed. He did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. They said to him then, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing? If you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophets, 
John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the tongue of Sander I am not worthy to untie. This took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'm starting our reflection with the gospel passage because we are taking the gospel of St. John which takes us away from the gospel we are reflecting on in year B. Why? Because the gospel of St. John does not have a year dedicated to it. It features, it is a visiting gospel in all the three years. In fact, we finish it all at the end of three years. We see the beginning of this gospel stressed in the passage of today. Get the context? It is the last gospel to be written, written around 90 to 100 AD. And remember something had happened in 70 AD, the destruction of the temple, after which the Jews decided to expel all those who were following Christ from the synagogue. So that was a kind of estrangement in terms of relationship between the Jews and the Christians. And the writer of the Gospel of John has this in mind. He is writing for us to understand what happened at the time, but every time we read the Gospel of St. John, we have to read it with this in mind, that there are two levels of understanding. He is talking about the things that are there, but he's also having in mind the interpretation to be given to a reader who was not there at the time when these things were happening. So there are two levels of meaning here. One meaning in the interaction of the people in the story John the Baptist and those questioning him, and another meaning in the conversation between the author John and the rest of us who were not there. So John has a very deep message for us. Every time we read the Gospel of St. John, it is all for us. He's writing it in such a way that we grasp we understand what it is referring to. It's not about the things that just happened and have gone. No, it's about the things that are happening right now in our lives. Look at this gospel. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light, which light? Jesus Christ, the light that came into the world. That is why Christmas is celebrated around this period here in the West when there is a lot of darkness. There is a lot of darkness because in most of the places here in Europe, it gets dark by 15, 30, 16 hours. It's already fully dark. And so Christ comes around this time when there is a lot of darkness with the peak of darkness being four days from now, the 21st of December, when we have the shortest day and the longest night after which the slope now starts and we slowly start getting back to light. And Christmas is celebrated on the 25th of December, taking it from a pagan feast that used to celebrate the birthday of the sun. The birthday of the sun, the birthday of light. Christ is our real light. Christ is our real son. And John came to proclaim that son. And John, who came to proclaim that son, had questions to answer. When they asked him, who are you? He confessed. He did not deny, but confessed, I'm not the Christ. 
is not a man to pretend because you know if you want joy in your life don't pretend if you want to live a life of joy be yourself don't tell people what you are not don't pretend to live a life that you don't have are you a governor? Not really, but I stay near the governor. I am just two doors from the governor. So what? Does that make you a governor? Are you a governor? No, actually the governor is my brother. So what? Does that make you a governor? No, it doesn't. Be yourself. Are you a governor? No, I am not. It is my brother who is a governor. That's being authentic. And it shows how joyful you are. It shows how much you have accepted yourself. You have accepted your situation. This man did not mince words. He said it clearly. I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then are you? Are you Elijah? Where are they getting this from? They're getting this from Malachi chapter 3 verse 23 because they already started sensing there must be a Christ coming. If he's not the Christ, then he must be the Elijah that is promised in this passage. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes. And then he said, no. So they asked him, are you a prophet? They are taking these words from Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15 where we see Moses saying a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kinsmen to him you shall listen. Wait a minute. So they are asking could he be another Moses here? He said, no, I am not any of that. Okay, then who are you? He answered, taking from Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, the passage that we read on the second Sunday of Advent. I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. He is the voice. And this is exactly what we are supposed to be, the voice. We are supposed to be the voice crying out, make straight the parts. Crying out to ourselves, make straight the parts. Because if we are to be joyful, we must be people able to make straight our own parts. Make straight your own path if you want to live a joyful life. Come on, correct what is wrong in your life. You know what is happening to yourself? You know how disorderly is your own life? You can correct that. You can live a new life. He says, I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. Even he who comes after me in the thorn of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Among you stands one whom you do not know. Now, this is to be understood on two levels. The first level applies to the people at the time of John the Baptist. And the second level is our own level. Among you stands one whom you do not know. Christ, who is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. If he's in our midst, then we don't have to live with the concerns that affect our lives. We know he's with us. We know he knows what we are going through. And if he knows what we are going through, then we shouldn't worry. People who worry too much, people who carry a lot in their hearts are those who don't know there is one standing in their midst who comforts them, who comes to bring the good tidings to the broken hearted, who comes to mend the broken hearts. That is exactly what we are referring to in the first reading of today. The third Isaiah, the great post-Babylonian exile prophet who called those who had returned from exile to be faithful to their covenant relationship with God. He describes his own call. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He then goes on to describe the people for whom he had been called. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor 
to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners that's a message we are taking home with we are saying i'm not going to be sad because i have the lord who comes to heal my brokenness i have the lord who comes to take me out of my captivity i have the lord who takes me out of prison i am imprisoned to my own passions i am imprisoned to my drunkenness i am imprisoned to my humanizing i am imprisoned to the fact that i cannot stay with one man in my life I'm imprisoned to the fact that I cannot manage without lying I am imprisoned to the fact that I cannot manage without a bribe and the Lord is coming to restore me he's saying you know what I want you to be joyful you can do very well without all these things you can do very well without your gossip stop it and I'm telling you, you are going to be a joyful person. Happy Gaudete Sunday. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Gaudete Sunday to you. Thanks be to God. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. His presence is full and a joy. Full and a joy.